Hey guys, how's it going? So I hope you're doing all right. Um, I have music on right now. How's it going, Langoris? Hope you're doing okay. I don't know if you guys can hear the music or not, but I'm experimenting with it. And if it's too loud or anything, just let me know and I'll try and turn it down a little bit. So yeah, but I hope you guys are doing all right and everything. And I did quite a bit of work off stream like yesterday. I mean, it wasn't too much work, but I did do some stuff. So I'll sort of go through that and let you guys know what I did. And okay, cool. Thank you for letting me know. So basically like, uh, I did all the compression. <laughs> so first of all, we definitely have a lot more compression going on. This is an eight chunk radius. And you can notice over here that we're only using up 512 megabytes. So that is like huge savings from what we were using before. And I also added in chunk loading and unloading. So you'll notice as I move, like the chunks behind me will unload and stuff. And I get more chunks loaded in front of me, except uh, as you can see, it's super frame ratey and every time I hit a chunk boundary, it like lags and then it loads everything. So that's what we're going to be working on this stream is basically fixing this lag and getting it so this all works properly. So with that said, I guess we'll get started doing that. Uh, the way we're going to be doing this is we're going to multi-thread the generation of the chunks and everything and sort of get that working properly. And I'm sorry, here, give me just one minute because... I can't do this with headphones. <laughs> so uh, those are noise canceling headphones. And when I'm talking with those things on, I just can't hear right. So I'm not gonna be able to hear the music at all. So if it gets really weird or something too, just let me know and I'll switch it off and stuff. Okay, anyways though. So yeah, basically I've done quite a bit of work. Um, the issue I had in the last stream was actually pretty, it, it was really stupid, honestly. So the issue I had in the last stream was literally, I just had this is zero and this is zero. So if I switch this back to zero in the shader, then you'll notice we get that really weird bug again, which is just, I mean, that's great, right? <laughs> yeah, so everything just goes black because of course, if you're sampling from the same texture cord and everything, it's not gonna look right. So you can fix that super easily just by changing this to one and then it magically fixes everything. So I felt kind of stupid because I solved that off stream like two seconds after I finished, but it was good that that was done and everything, so. Yeah, but basically we've got an eight chunk radius right now. Uh, it only takes up half a gigabyte, which I'm pretty happy with. I feel like we could still get it down a little bit lower if we really try some stuff. Um, for instance, one thing I still need to do is remove faces between chunks. So we might work on that today as well. But what I really want to get working, like I said, is just when we move and we load new chunks in, it just, it stops the game completely. And there's no reason for that because we can multi-thread some stuff. now. If you've worked with OpenGL, you've probably heard don't multi-thread, multi-threading is stupid, and you'll break everything if you multi-thread, which is true. Like, don't multi-thread OpenGL. <laughs> but we can multi-thread another part, which is, if we look in the chunk, uh, this sort of has two phases, and I separated these out on purpose. I mean, okay, so we have this generate render data, and we also have this generate function. So the generate function sort of generates the blocks and does the noise and all that stuff. Then the generate render data generates the stuff that we're going to upload to the GPU. And then finally, what we end up doing is we upload it to the GPU. This is the part we can't multi-thread. So this is the part I'm going to have to be very careful with. And I'll sort of separate this out into another function so that we can take care of that. And then I'm going to add a flag to the chunks so that we know when they're being operated on in a multi-threaded context. Because if they're being operated on, we don't want to touch them until they're finished. And so we'll deal with that and everything. And how's it going, Essie Woods? I hope you're doing all right. And you said commercial at start of the video. Something must have happened. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, I didn't set that up. Maybe I have to turn that off. But uh, yeah, I got Twitch affiliate on Thursday. So subscriptions and all that stuff work now, which is pretty cool. And... I put on this sound alerts thing. I don't know how it works or whatever. Uh, <laughs> I added a few sounds and stuff. So um, yeah, we'll see how that works. And really hype rocket. Yeah, you watched an ad before the video too. Okay, I might turn that off because I feel like that's probably kind of annoying and I don't know how that works with everything. And thank you, Snoo, for following. So yeah, uh, basically we're going to be multi-threading this episode to try and get rid of those hitches when we're moving through the frames and everything. And we'll see how this works. And I see what you said. No, no. I think it's because of Twitch affiliate. Just keep the ad. No problem with it. Okay. 
So if we add in a flag to the chunk, first of all, uh, this is just gonna be a working flag. And so this is basically gonna let us know whether the chunk is being operated on or not. Um, so when this is true, we can't really do anything with the chunk until it's false because we don't wanna have like race conditions or anything like that where basically you have two threads fighting for control over some data. Uh, and this will basically just sort of be our flag. We can operate on it and I'm gonna offload this generate function and this generate rendered data all to a separate threaded context. That way that doesn't cause any hitches. And then we'll add this function as like a public function so that we can just sort of uh, do this separately. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually remove this and I added this loaded flag just so that I know when it's loaded and everything too. And we're gonna put loaded equals true when we actually load it, which is right here. So after this, we'll say loaded equals true. And I'm gonna go ahead and, or actually I don't have to do that. So I'll just say chunk namespace uh, function. So just to create that as a function, we can remove this because it's not really doing anything. This doesn't change anything in the function too. Fun <laughs> this doesn't change anything in the chunk too. So I'm gonna call this a const function. So this is what happens when you try to talk too fast. <laughs> but yeah, this is this can be const because we're not actually changing anything and I like to mark things as const when they are just so that I know as a developer that I'm not actually gonna be modifying anything. And it doesn't like this for some reason. So, oh, we can just change that to render data. And this says, what does this say? Argument type of const un32 star is incompatible with glu int star. Okay, so actually, I guess we can't technically mark this as const because we are changing some stuff. So I'll change that back and then we will mark this as non-const because that does make sense. Okay, we are changing stuff because we're changing the VAO and the v the VBO. So yeah, take that back. <laughs> Anyways, though, yeah. So then once this gets loaded, we'll mark it as loaded is true. And I'm going to go up and delete the forward declaration that I had up here just so that that's not confusing the compiler or anything. Yeah. So we'll just delete that because we don't need it anymore. And now for the fun part, which is going to be the multi-threading. First of all, let's make sure I didn't break anything. Um, I'm going to have to modify this a little bit. I guess I should go over how I'm doing the loading and the unloading too. It's actually pretty simple. Um, so first let me change this and then I'll kind of go over what I'm doing to load in new chunks and unload chunks. And I'll show it one more time for those of you who like just joined and stuff so that you can see how that's working. But yeah. First of all, I have to generate the render data and then I have to say upload to GPU. And we'll be able to separate all this stuff onto a separate thread, which will be really nice. Uh, so basically, this is what we have now. I have compressed everything, like I told everyone uh, who was here a few minutes ago. Well, if this will run. <laughs> uh, first of all, I'll just delete that because I changed that to a member function and we should be good now. Okay, yeah, I think we should be fine. Okay, yeah, so I've compressed everything. Nope, we're not good yet. <laughs> oh, this makes sense. This is kind of stupid. I'm getting a reference to itself. So <laughs> let's not do that either. Okay, now we should be good. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I have an eight chunk radius here. And you'll see that first of all, we're only using up 514 megabytes. Now, if you'll recall, <laughs> when I started this whole optimization process, a 16 chunk radius, I think it was, uh, or maybe it was a 32 chunk radius. A 32 chunk radius took up 30 gigabytes of RAM, which is just ridiculous. So through all the optimizations I did, I was able to reduce that to two gigabytes of RAM. So now if we use 32 chunk radius, then we're only using up two gigabytes of RAM, which is extremely like way better. And so now the problem is not with the CPU and the RAM, it's actually uh, with the GPU because it gets frame ready. So we'll have to do some other stuff to make that work a little bit better. But then I went ahead and I also added in chunk loading and unloading around the player. So as I move around in the world, you'll see that I get a little bit of a hitch every time I hit a chunk border and it loads in new chunks and then the chunks behind me unload. So we've got all that set up and it's working good. Um, the multi-threading is gonna be to help that hitch so that we don't actually get that because uh, I'm just sort of doing everything on a single thread, which is not good. But the way that I did this is pretty simple. So inside of world, I've basically just got a couple of data structures that help me out with this. So I've got a vector of chunks. Uh, the reason I chose a vector for this is because I want them to be contiguous in memory so that when I'm running through all the chunks and like updating them and like all that stuff, uh, it's just super fast. 
But then we've also got this unordered set, which I might change to an unordered map that maps to an index inside of this vector. Uh, we'll see how that works out. But basically, this ordered set or unordered set just tells me the loaded chunk positions and a set is really fast. It's like a hash map. So everything won't be contiguous in memory, but it will uh, give me like a key value type indexing, right? I can just give it a vector two, which is the chunk's position, and it'll tell me if it exists or not. So that's nice. Um, and so I use these two in conjunction to determine which chunks are loaded and which ones are not. And then when I update, I literally just get the player's position uh, in chunk coordinates. So that means I divide it by 16, so we know. And then I just go through all of the loaded chunks and I basically render them. And then after I render them, I check the chunk's position relative to the player's position. And we see if the squared result of this added together is greater than chunk radius squared. So we're basically just doing sort of a distance check with a circular radius. Um, and if it is, that means that this chunk is out of bounds from the player. So we just mark it to be unloaded. This unload function doesn't actually unload anything. It just marks it as unloaded. And then we say loaded chunk positions dot erase. And uh, this will basically remove it from our loaded chunk positions so that we don't accidentally think that it's actually loaded. And then at the end of the frame, we actually unload the chunks. The reason I don't do it in the middle here is because we'll probably get some issues with like the GPU is trying to render this stuff and we don't want to start modifying GPU state while it's actually in the middle of rendering and everything. So I put it off till the end of the frame, which this will actually happen on a separate thread too, uh, as much as we can. And then uh, this unloaded chunks things basically just goes ahead and it iterates through all of the chunks. If it is not loaded, then it marks a message so that we know and then it frees it which at the moment deletes it from the gpu and frees the cpu memory i may separate these into two separate stages so that we can free it on the cpu side in a separate thread and then free it on the gpu side in the main thread and then after we free it uh we basically just update the iterator uh, otherwise we just increment the iterator i don't have a terminator in this for loop because we'll get some problems if we do so that's how we unload the chunks. And then for right after that, we check the chunk radius, which basically just loads in new chunks if needed. So this check chunk radius basically gets the player position in chunk coordinates again. And then we get like the start X and the end X and the start Z and the end Z. So this is like what the ideal uh, chunk boundaries would be. And then we just iterate through that. And we basically say if we find this in our unorder set or if we don't find it, that means this is a chunk that we need to be loaded, but it isn't loaded. So then I just load it and then I say if uh, we already have this as like a, a file path, then we're just going to deserialize it and load it from file. Uh, otherwise, if it is not, then we'll generate it as a new chunk. And then we just generate the render data. We upload it to the GPU. We add it to our loaded chunks and we added it to our positions. So yeah, that is how loading and unloading of chunks works. It's pretty straightforward. So there's nothing too complicated going on in here. The complicated part is going to be what we do now, <laughs> which is uh, multi-threading. So first of all, I'm going to Google multi-threading in C++ because I always forget. I don't do this enough to remember. So let's just go to here and see what they say. Yep. So we basically just get a thread um, and we give it a function and we give it some parameters and then the thread just sort of launches into this function. Okay, and so I don't like the format of this. Let's go to something else. <laughs> okay, let's see what Josh Weinstein has to say. Okay, so we basically have a worker function um, and we just launch a thread with that function and then we can join the thread to wait for it to complete. So that's all good. What I'm probably gonna do is instead of having the thread ever stop, like this function will just run infinitely um, and then we'll have to have some sort of flag that sort of tells this to stop and that's how we'll stop it. And this will just constantly be iterating through the chunks, looking for which ones need to be loaded or gen which ones need to have data generated and which ones need to be unloaded. And it'll just sort of do all that stuff in the background. So that's the plan. And it looks like we can just start it just by doing this, which is pretty simple. Uh, I'm gonna have to include thread. So we'll go to core.h and get that done. And SE Woods, you're saying, just curious, will I add a donate button? Um, I don't know how that stuff works. So <laughs> I thought that would be 
automatically added by Twitch, maybe. But uh, if it's not there, then I'll add it to the next stream. And you said, because as far as you can see, it's up to the streamer to add it. Okay, okay. So yeah, I'll check it out, all the settings and stuff after this stream. And then hopefully by the next stream, I'll have all that stuff up and running so that you guys can uh, do all that stuff and it should be good. So I just haven't had a chance to look at all the Twitch affiliate stuff yet. I tried enabling some of the stuff, but not all of it. Yeah. And Langors, you said, stood async and stood future are nice APIs to generate objects from other threads. Um, so I'm not going to be generating the objects from other threads, hopefully. Uh, so the chunks will be generated in the main thread and it's simply going to be working on those chunks and just generating the data and stuff as needed because I don't want to have to deal with like synchronization and all that stuff as much as possible. So basically I just want it to sort of be running in the background and it's just going through constantly. And then if it sees something, it's like, oh, I have to generate this and then it marks it. It says, hey, I'm working on this. And then we sort of go from there. But uh, I'll check out stood async and stood future if needed, because I may not be able to do what I want with this and we may have to fix it up a little bit. But for now, we'll try the simplest solution, which is just sort of marking the chunk as it's working and not doing anything with it until it's done working. So, yeah. OK, anyways, though, and I guess I should probably have one more flag in here, too. It's probably better to just store these all in a 16 bit integer, which we might do in the future, too. <clears throat> but for now, we'll just have another bool, which is uh, should load something like that, which basically just tells the thread that's operating on it. Uh, this needs to be loaded. And then I guess we should have one more, too. That's bool should unload, <laughs> which tells it it should unload. OK, so we'll try and work with these four bools and see if this all works properly. And we'll go from there. So first thing I'm going to do, too, is when we say unload, this is going to say should unload is true. And when we say load, which I have somewhere up here, I believe. Oh, maybe I don't have a load chunk function. OK, so we should probably have like a load func load function, too. So let's say void load. And I'll put this right by unload. And this will just say void chunk load should load equals true. OK. And what's the saying? Oh, OK. It's just taking a while to update. OK, cool. And how's it going, Flare YouTube? I hope you're doing all right as well. OK, so we've got that in place. And now when we're going through here, if we see a chunk uh, that this is sort of all going to be offloaded into the threads. So first of all, let's create a function that's just sort of going to do all this stuff for us. So we'll have a function up here that is static void uh, chunk worker, I guess is what we'll call it. And this will work on all the chunks and it'll just operate on the same data as everyone else. And we shouldn't have any problems, hopefully. I may have to do some extra work to get this to work properly. And yep, I'm doing good too, Flare YouTube. OK, so. This worker thread is basically just going to be looping through the chunks. So it's going to say for, uh, first of all, while true, for auto chunk. I guess we can't use an iterator because that'll probably be bad uh, if we start changing things. So I'm not going to use an iterator. This will say for int i equals zero until i is less than loaded chunks dot size i plus plus. And see, this is what kind of scares me because it can get tricky when you have two things iterating through the same thing. And so I kind of wonder if I should have like a staging area where basically newly loaded chunks sort of get placed into the staging area and then the main thread just sort of picks them up and moves them into the main list. And I think that's a good idea. So yeah, I'm kind of conflicted on this. We'll see what happens, but I think that's probably going to be the best way. So I'll say static stood vector chunk uh, staged chunks and this will sort of be the ones that were uh, completed and then we'll just sort of pull stuff out of here in the main thread and put them back into here as they're completed once they're done working and everything well yeah okay I think that's how I'm gonna do it I think that'll probably be the best way okay 
And yesterday was Friday the 13th. <laughs> There's way more Friday the 13th than I thought there would be when I was younger. I always thought it was special. And then I was like, oh, it happens like every few months. <laughs> but it's still fun. Okay, so inside of this chunk worker, he's basically going to go through the loaded chunks and say if loaded chunks I dot. Okay, so yeah, this is where I'm like, how should I synchronize this? Okay, let's let's Google something. How to add to list in multi-threaded environment. Okay, vector. And I hope that wasn't to me for YouTube. <laughs> but I mean, if it was, thank you. <laughs> okay, so what to use a multi-threaded environment vector or ArrayList? Uh, I have this situation, web application. Okay, actually both ArrayList and vector are very bad choices, not because of synchronization, but because removing the first element is big O N. Concurrent linked queue. It offers both thread safety and big O one add and removing. This guy says vector is worse than useless. Don't even use it when multi-threading. Trivial example is why is consider two threads simultaneously iterating and removing elements on the list at the same time. The methods size get remove might all be synchronized, but the iteration loop is not atomic. Uh, one thread is bound to try removing something that's not there. Instead, use synchronized blocks where you expect two threads to access the same data. Yeah, see, this is the annoying part because you have all this synchronization stuff that you have to worry about, which is just kind of annoying, huh? <laughs> and thanks, Flare YouTube. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I want to just have like an array of chunks that way we don't have to worry about like the memory ever moving and i guess i'll just try and work with this so let's try and do like a chunk array and i guess this could just be a chunk pointer uh and the way we'll set it is it's going to be the chunk radius times two so that way like if we're adding and unloading some chunks we should never have like an area where we're out of memory or something. We should still have enough memory. So possibly try this. Multi-threading is something that I'm not very familiar with in case you guys didn't notice, but I try to avoid it where possible. And if I am doing something, it's usually like working on something that's easily parallelizable, uh, where it's just sort of, it's a natural fit for the problem, which I would say this is too, but I think I'm just thinking about it the wrong way. So let me think about this one more time. So we've got some chunks that we need to load and we basically want to offload some work to them in the background. We shouldn't be adding or removing chunks while these are working basically is what we want to do. But that's kind of bad too because sometimes you need to add and remove stuff well, it's working anyways. Okay, yeah. I think this is going to be the easiest way just to have like a static array. So we'll see how this goes, uh, which I've said like five times this stream. <laughs> okay, so we'll say loaded chunks equals. Uh, and thanks, Fire YouTube. Yeah, we're almost at 100 followers, which is pretty crazy. YouTube, it took like a year to get to 100 followers. <laughs> so we'll say this is a chunk star. And I'll say G alloc, or I think it's memory allocate. And I'm gonna do size of chunk times chunk radius times two. So that's how much we should have. I'll make this constant. Uh, maybe I shouldn't because it could technically change, but if it changes, then we'll sort of mark that in some way. For now, it's gonna be constant. Okay, so anyways, we're just gonna, un we're gonna load this and then when we free the world to, so when we clean up, uh, we need to make sure we memory free the chunks I guess it's loaded chunks. So that should be good. And it's not going to like this anymore too. So we'll just say for int i equals zero until i is less than, and let's just make a, we'll say this is const and static const unt 16 chunk capacity is chunk radius times two. 
Okay. So this is just going to be chunk capacity. That way we know exactly how many we have. And we should never have to worry about that. What's this saying? Oh, did I spell that wrong? I did. <laughs> There's an A in there. Okay, cool. So then if we go down to here, we can just say that until I is less than chunk capacity. I plus plus. And we'll say const chunk. Well, actually, this is going to be const. Uh, chunk equals chunks or loaded chunks i okay cool so that should be good and flare youtube you said you want to make your own 3d mobile game engine but you have no idea how that's a very difficult task so <laughs> i'd say try and start with the game first and then move on from there and then hilbert curve you said wait is chunk capacity the max number of chunks loadable no so uh basically when you're loading and unloading chunks my fear is that you could load in the chunk radius which is how much you should only or i guess the chunk radius squared that's a good idea too um i did not think about this so i don't know if you meant to mention this but <laughs> this should be chunk radius times chunk radius times two but um so basically we can have this many chunks loaded at any given time but there is a chance that if we're like unloading some old chunks and they haven't completely unloaded yet uh that they're still hanging around in memory and then if we tried to add like another chunk it wouldn't really work um, so I'm using this times two to give us some buffer room just in case there's still some chunks that are unloading. And then once they're finally unloaded, then we can sort of, uh, use everything and see, this gives me pause too, because now it's like, if we're unloading, okay. Yeah. If we're unloading a chunk, we can just sort of mark it as free and then we can use it. So I'm going to add in one more bool here which is is empty or actually i guess loaded would be a good bool for that because if it's not loaded then it should be empty okay so we can sort of work with this yeah so anyways yeah so we're gonna have enough to hold all the chunks times two just in case we have some buffer i guess we could do like 1.5 or something because it's probably not likely to go that high but it shouldn't take that much extra memory uh, one more thing I'm going to do is say G memory zero uh, loaded chunks size of chunk times chunk capacity. So we'll zero that memory out so that it looks like it's all empty. And Hilbert Kirby said, right, we need a buffer. Yeah. So now if we go back down here, this should be fine. Now we free it afterwards and this should be good too. And we only want to free it if it's not loaded. So I guess we should check, but we could also check that in here. We could just say if loaded will free. So that should be good. Um, and then we'll also set all of this stuff to like bad data just so that we should get an error if we try to do this. So we'll say render data, render state dot VBO equals zero, which technically should be fine, but uh, We'll set that to zero and we'll set render data dot vertices equal to null pointer and render data dot chunk data, or I guess that's just chunk data to null pointer. Okay, cool. And cool. Thanks, Essie Woods. Wow. For six months. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. That's awesome. That is the play of the game. I would agree. I'm old. When I started seeing Pog around, I guess I'm not that old, but when I started seeing people like say Pog everywhere, I was like, what the heck does Pog mean? Like, what is this? And I find myself Googling all of these acronyms and stuff because I'm like, I have no idea what this means. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. So we're going to set this to null pointer and stuff. And hopefully that's good. Then if we go back into world.cpp, we shouldn't have to worry about this, like trying to free unloaded memory because it's going to check. And then we'll just modify this guy as well. We'll say for int i equals zero until i is less than chunk capacity, i plus plus. And we'll only do this if the chunk is loaded. So we'll say if chunk dot loaded, or I guess first we have to get the chunk. So chunk ref equals loaded chunks i if chunk dot loaded dot is loaded. Okay, there we go. Uh, then we'll render it only if it's loaded. Um, 
and it's not working and not chunk dot working just in case because I don't want to mess anything up, right? <laughs> okay, so we're going to upload the vector to and then render it if it's loaded and it's not working. And um, also, yeah, when we free it, that's also something that we should do. When we free it, we should say chunk dot uh, or I guess it's just loaded equals false. So now it's not loaded. Should load equals false. Should unload equals false. And then what was the last one I had was working. Uh, I'll leave that because I don't want to modify that unless it's in the uh, thread. So yeah. And I see what you said. You're more than welcome. Six months was actually the limit. <laughs> I really, yeah, I really do appreciate that. That's awesome, man. And Hilbert Curve, you had no idea how uh, Pogment play the game. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what it means. That's what Google told me once upon a time, at least. So, yeah. I could be wrong, though, because, you know, I don't know what everyone's talking about these days. <laughs> okay, so we're going to set all that stuff to false. Should be good. And then once we do this, we say... We get the loaded chunk position. This should all be in here too. Uh, so I'll put that all in here. So this unload should just mark it as like should unload. And then instead of doing loaded chunk positions dot erase. Or yeah, we can still do this. This will be fine. So then we'll erase it from the loaded chunk position. So we know it's not loaded anymore. Um, that should not be modified concurrently. I don't think. Hopefully. I might have to rethink this too. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, anyways though. Yeah, so that should work good. Um, and then the unloading of chunks... Basically, what does that do right now? So that goes through and it does all this stuff. We no longer have to worry about this because we can just say int i equals zero until i is less than chunk capacity, i plus plus, and then I can say chunk ref chunk equals loaded chunks. I, and I guess this shouldn't be called loaded chunks anymore because that's technically not true. This is just our chunks now uh, because these are not all gonna be loaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this which is very annoying in C++ because C++ doesn't like making things nice. Well, it's because it's really hard to get IntelliSense features like you have for C Sharp, I guess, working in C++. But yeah, anyways, I'm just going to change that, change that, change that. And that is not going to be in place back anymore. Uh, okay, this is inside of check chunk radius. Okay, so we're going to have to do something a little bit different for this as well. Uh, we're basically gonna have to find like just do a simple function that basically looks for an empty slot and then puts This and then uses that chunk instead of what we're doing here So I guess this shouldn't be too bad. So this chunk is gonna be a chunk, a chunk ref and We're gonna say this equals find unloaded chunk and then we're just gonna go up to here and say static chunk ref find unloaded chunk and it's just gonna do a linear search because I don't think we are only gonna have like a few hundred elements in this index at once. So I don't see it being a bottleneck, but once we profile and if it is, we'll fix that. So we'll say for int i equals zero until i is less than chunks, or I guess chunk capacity, i plus plus. And then we'll say chunk ref chunk equals chunks i if chunk dot loaded return chunk and we want that to be if chunk is not loaded i have this nasty habit i don't know if you guys do this while coding but whenever i'm writing a condition i never write the stupid uh not operator first <laughs> i always write this and then i'm like oh yeah i need to write that too and so yeah but anyways if we get down to here i'm gonna log an error uh, ran out of room of loaded chunks i guess we could make this an assertion error because this is probably a bad place to be so I'll say g logger assert false and if this happens then we'll just return I can't return a null pointer because we're doing a reference so we'll return a chunk but we shouldn't have to worry about this this is just to appease the compiler this assertion should stop execution and it should just kill the game which is what we want to happen if we ever got to this point and as you would you said how far do you plan on taking this minecraft going so I'm probably gonna take it so that we get physics um, some better terrain generation and stuff. You get some basic ores in the game and an inventory and some basic AI. That's how far I want to take it. So 
once we get to there, I'll probably stop working on this and start working on a game that me and my brothers want to do, which is sort of based on Minecraft. So uh, I'll keep doing these streams, but it's just going to be a different type of stream. So yeah, uh, I think I mentioned that in one of the other streams. Basically, we want to make a game that's kind of like a mix of Terraria and Minecraft, um, except we'll be kind of putting our own flair on it and stuff. So once this gets to a good place, hopefully I can start moving off towards like my own game, but also be able to do YouTube series on this stuff so that anyone else who's interested can learn how to make it. Yeah. Okay, so this find unloaded chunk will return the chunk and it'll kill the program if we ran out of room for whatever reason. So now we can just use this chunk reference and we don't have to replace anything and we're not modifying any arrays, which is good. I mean, technically we are, but we're not. So hopefully that'll be good. And this thing still kind of scares me because I have a feeling this is going to blow up, but we'll see. We'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, so anyways, this finds the unloaded chunk and then it basically just does all that stuff and we're going to have this all sort of be in the thread once we get that working too. And this unload chunks thing is basically going to say if chunk, if not chunk not loaded, then we're going to do this and this will be chunk change this one as well. And then we can also change this to chunk.free and that should unload it. I believe I might have to say chunk.unload. No, because once we free it, it does all that stuff anyways, right? Yeah, just marks all that. But we're going to have to modify it a little bit because this is going to be in the main thread. So instead, what we're going to do is going to say like chunk dot should unload or I guess just unload and that will sort of mark it as it should unload and we should be good here. So yeah, I guess this is a good time to start sort of moving everything to the multi-threaded context now. So this is going to be running in the main thread as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to say find this if it's not inside of our set then this chunk is not loaded so then if that's true we want to generate a new chunk so we find a loaded chunk and then what i'm going to do then is i'm just going to say chunk dot load which is going to mark should load and then we'll do all of this stuff let's see so that's We'll do all of this stuff on the thread. Oh, and I don't have to have this on the multi-threaded side, do I? Well, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't. So I can just do this as soon as we start, as we as soon as we mark it for loading. So I can keep this all on the main thread. Okay, so that kind of eases my uh, anxiety a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> so we'll move most of this to the thread and then we'll separate out that upload function, everything too. But yeah, so we'll move most of this to this thread and we'll basically just say this should go through the chunk capacity. And we'll say uh, chunk ref chunk equals uh, chunks I. If chunk dot should load, then we want to do this. And then if the chunk should unload, we'll do that. And we're gonna move this as well. So, this is going to be the hard part, sort of marking it as like, oh, we're done, but it's still not loaded. Oh, and I think I know how we'll we'll get that too. Okay, so anyways, we'll do this on this separate thread and everything. And we need the X and the Z, which is actually pretty easy because we can just use the chunks X and the chunks Z. So that's another thing I have to do is what's wrong with this? Oh, I guess this is uh, coordinates dot X and this is coordinates dot Z. And we'll do the same thing here, chunk.coordinates.x, chunk.coordinates.z. And once again, the same thing here, chunk.coordinates.x and chunk.coordinates.z. Okay, cool. So, oh, and I guess this should be y because I'm using a 2D vector for that, but it's technically the z index in the world coordinates and stuff, but yeah. Okay, so that's good. We're gonna have to have this happen on the main thread. So I will, comment that out and separate it out for now. But then we also have one more condition, which is if chunk, which I guess technically, if it should load, it should never have it so that it should unload. So we'll say else if chunk dot should unload, that's true. Then we'll just do our chunk dot free, which is gonna mark it as unloaded, free all the memory. 
um, except we're gonna have to free the GPU memory main thread too. Okay, so this is where it gets complicated because stupid OpenGL, I guess it's not stupid, but you have to worry about this stuff. I want to switch to Vulkan eventually if I ever learn how to actually use Vulkan because then you can do multi-threading on the GPU too, which is kind of nice. And I don't have to worry about like the separation of, oh, when do I do this and when do I not, so. But yeah, okay, so. This is gonna be free, but it shouldn't free the chunk from the GPU. Um, right here, I think I should say chunk dot should load equals false now. And we need some way to see if it's loaded on the GPU, which is basically, it's just gonna, or actually, I guess what we can do is we can just say chunk dot working equals false. So this is true too. So if the chunk should load, we first mark it as working here. So if it's working, we don't want to do anything to it. So uh, as soon as this is done working, it'll basically mark it here and we should be good. Same thing here, we'll say chunk dot working equals true, chunk dot working equals false. So we just sort of wrap it and I guess this is kind of like a lock and regular multi-threaded stuff, but I'm just doing it with some booleans because it's a little bit easier. And a lock is definitely more complicated. It's not quite this simple. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we basically set it to working and then we set it to not working. And Langors, you said, wouldn't it be easier to have a single int or byte instead of booleans that hold the state of the chunk and wrap that int byte in stood atomic? Yeah, uh, I think it would. Um, I'm still kind of debating. So like, because you mentioned something I didn't think of. I was going to do that initially, just make this all into a byte and then have some bit masks that did that. But uh, you just mentioned that it would have to be wrapped in stood atomic, which I forgot about because if it's not, then we could modify it concurrently, which isn't good. Uh, so maybe what I could do though is there's going to be some of these flags that are never going to be touched on the thread and then some of these flags so like are going to be read only on the main thread and then some of the flags are going to be read only on the separate thread so yeah I'm going to wait on that <laughs> but anyways one way we can make this super easy too um, so this is obviously only going to be working on a separate thread but we can easily multi-thread this by just splitting up the chunk capacity into blocks so like say we have one thread that's working on the first zero to four, then the next thread is working on five to eight. Um, then we should be able to separate this into multiple threads too, which will be nice. But yeah, um, I'll think about that Langors. So for now though, I just want to sort of see how all this works and see if I can get it conceptualized correctly. And then we'll move on from there. Okay, yeah, so we have this chunk dot working. Yep, so that's all fine. And let's go back to the main thread right here. Um, I guess we, we could do it like inside this unload chunks and chunk radius still, right? So when we're checking the chunk radius, we can do all this stuff, um, but we can also add in something that says, well, actually, I guess we should just do this in the unload chunks. So this should just be a, uh, synchronize chunks is what I'm going to call this instead. Okay, so we'll have this function which basically just unloads all the stuff from the GPU and loads it from the GPU as necessary and all that stuff. So let's go down to here. We'll call this synchronize chunks. So go through and we'll say if the chunk is not loaded, uh, chunk to unload, which is good. And this basically loads the chunks. Okay, and then we'll have another thing which is basically if chunk dot if not chunk dot working and, and I guess I should put this here too, and not chunk dot working because we don't want to do that same time. So the chunk's not working and chunk dot should load, which basically means hopefully that the thread has finished working and okay, see, this is a problem too. This is why I don't like multi-threaded stuff. Ah, okay. So what I was thinking was we were gonna do like use this chunk working flag and then this chunk dot should load uh, to check and see if the chunk is finished working and now the chunk should load. But I think what you're saying Langors is probably gonna be the best idea. I'm gonna switch to the drawing screen real quick just because I need to formalize this a little bit more in my head. So let's go over here.
and I got to write this out just a little bit so I can understand this. So I'm going to scroll down to here. I guess right here is fine. Well, yeah, we'll go right here. Okay, so basically we have all these chunks that are loaded in around the player, right? And we want to figure out which ones are marked for loading and which ones are marked for unloading. So let's say we have a few over here that have been marked for unloading. So these ones are being unloaded and we have a few over here that have been marked to load. So the main thread should mark this as unloading. So he should say unload. That's an A. <laughs> and then main thread should also mark this for loading. So he should say load this. That's also an A, a very bad A. And then the separate thread is just sort of continuously going through all these chunks. And that's where it's kind of hard. Oh, you know what I can do? I can say as soon as he marks it for loading, uh, we can set the thread we can say that it's working. Okay, I just solved this sort of in my head as I was looking at that. Okay. Sorry if this doesn't make much sense to you guys because this is sort of me just trying to work through all this stuff in my head and uh, hopefully solve it. Okay, so basically what we'll do, and Eddie Dev, hey, how's it going? What am I working on? Uh, so basically I have chunk loading working, but it slows down every time I load more chunks. So we're separating that to a separate thread which should mean that generating the chunk data and all that stuff should be super fast. But we sort of have to synchronize stuff because the GPU can't be multi-threaded or at least OpenGL can't. So yeah, there's weird synchronization issues. But yeah, ultimately though, I'm coding Minecraft. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, anyways though. So what I just thought of is when we're here on the main thread, we can say chunk.render and we can say here, oh, we need to unload this. And so what I'll do is I'll say chunk.working equals true as soon as we start to unload this. And then we'll let the thread figure out when it's done. So the thread shouldn't even be setting it as working. The thread just sets it as, hey, we're done working. So that way we don't have to worry about, you know, thinking it's not working when it is and stuff. This should all happen pretty good. So then we need to do the same thing when we go to load a chunk too. So uh, right here, yeah, when we're checking the chunk radius, so right before we go to load the chunk, and I guess we could technically put this inside the load and the unload functions, which makes sense. So we'll say working equals true in here, just kind of separate that out. And then working equals true in here. So this should let us know that, hey, we can't do anything to this chunk now. Um, and if you're familiar with multi-threading, you're probably thinking uh, that what I'm doing is stupid and that's okay. I'm just sort of working through this because I don't do multi-threading. <laughs> but uh, Languors, do you use any tablet to write and if so, which one? I do. Uh, I use a Helion Canvas. I think if you watch Jazza on YouTube, he had a, uh, like a sort, he does promotion things all the time and I got a coupon code, which was pretty cool. But yeah. And as you said, in the 2D engine you created in the render batch, it's easy to batch because all the sprites have four vertices. Yes. And are you correct when you're saying that there's no need for ever loading different amounts of vertices because if you want a different shape, you just adjust the collider type that you want for the object, if this is understandable. And no problem, uh, Languors. Um, okay, wait, so. Yes, all sprites have four vertices. And are you correct when saying there's no need to ever load different amounts of vertices? Because if you want a different shape, you just adjust the collider that you want for the object. So if collider kind of rings like physics stuff in me, so I'm not quite sure what you mean there. But if what you're saying is like, do you ever need to load in a different amount of vertices? I mean, you do because like. So if, if you have a game world and you're making a game engine, you don't really know upfront how many game objects there will be. But if you know that when you ship the game, which is hard to tell just for all sorts of different reasons, you could theoretically just load in like one set amount of vertices and that would never change. 
if what you're saying though is like, can I draw different shapes using those same vertices? That's also true because the vertices are always ordered the same way. So you could theoretically upload just a different order of the vertices and draw the shapes. You might have to restate that just in a different way uh, if I'm misunderstanding you though. <laughs> okay, so right here though, uh, when we load the trunk, it should mark it as working and everything. And when we unload the trunk, it should mark it as working. So we don't have to worry about that. So then we can say, yeah, if the trunk's loaded and the trunk is not working, uh, we'll render it. And then if it's out of bounds, then we will unload it, which will mark it as working. And when we're finding unloaded chunks, okay, so that's different. And then when we chunk, check the chunk radius, we basically go through where we want all the chunks to be. Um, if we don't have it, then we'll find an unloaded chunk and then we'll set it to work and start generating itself. And then when we synchronize the chunks, we'll say if the chunk is not loaded and the chunk is not working, unload. Uh, this is a little bit different. This should be if the chunk should unload and the chunk is not working, then we'll say chunk unload which should set it to working and everything. Otherwise, if the chunk is not working and the chunk should load, okay, wait a second. Now I've got to think about this for a second. We're already unloading chunks right here. Yes. Okay. So this sets it to should unload is true. So I have to change this up a little bit more. So if the chunk should unload and the chunk is not working. What this means is the thread just finished working and it still hasn't unloaded it from the GPU. So what I should do here is chunk dot free GPU stuff. So we'll say unloading from GPU and modify this a bit. And then we'll go into chunk dot H and we'll have a free CPU and a void free GPU. And these will separate out this stuff. So that will do that. And then we'll have a, whoa, what did I just do? <laughs> okay. I think I clicked on the hyperlink. Okay. And as you would, you figured out the answer as you wrote the question. It's a moot question, but thanks anyway, <laughs> no problem. It happens. Sometimes, uh, they call that rubber ducking, right? When you're just sort of explaining your thoughts out loud and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I get it. Which also happens to me on this stream, which is why it's useful to stream stuff every now and then because it helps to talk to people and just sort of think your stuff through out loud. But yeah, right here we'll say void chunk free GPU. And so basically we're going to move this to here. So that's the GPU and then we will move this also to here. And we'll take this out of here because this is freeing the CPU and we'll free, we'll take that out of there. Okay. And now when we free on the CPU side, we don't want to mark any of this stuff, do we? Yeah. Cause we don't want to do that. It's only when we free on the GPU side, cause then we're truly done. Cause this should happen on the main thread after this has already been done. And this code is horrible because it's super stateful, but you know, I'll figure out a way to abstract this a little bit better in the future. But yeah, so anyways, once we free on the GPU, we should be able to mark it as unloaded. Uh, should load should be false now. Should unload should be false now and we should be good. Okay, cool. So that should be fine. When we're doing this now, we free it on the GPU, which is basically like the final freeing. And if the chunk's not working and the chunk should load, then this means that we should say chunk dot generate render no not generate but upload to gpu so this we'll just do that part and we'll say g logger info uploading to gpu chunk and we'll do chunk dot chunk chords x and chunk dot chunk chords y okay so that should be that and then let's just double check on this side again so if the chunk should load, then we check if it exists and this is marked as working already. And then once we're done, we mark as not working and we've just moved this. Uh, so this sort of generates all the data on the CPU side and then we just upload it after we finish that. Otherwise, if the chunk should unload, then we free it on the CPU side 
and working is false. Oh, and we should say and chunk dot working here. That way we don't accidentally do it twice. Okay, cool. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Let's see what happens. Uh, I also have to start the thread, which I forgot to do. Yeah, um, this is also going to be uh, cleanup is just called at the end of everything. So we'll just free CPU and free GPU and we should be fine there. Okay. And let me just double check this one more time. Yeah, so this should be fine. Okay, I'm fairly confident this will work. We'll see what happens. Anyways, if we go back into here, we can start the thread when we initialize everything. So let's look back here. So C++ multi-threading, we can just start a thread by doing something like this. Uh, so we'll just go in here. So thread. And this basically takes in, uh, what do we call it? Worker thread or something? Yeah, we called this. Oh, chunk worker right there. So that's working on that. I'm going to move this up a little bit too. And we'll put it right there. And it looks like I didn't rename this properly or something. Okay, so that's fine. Did I misspell something? No, it's right here. So I don't know why it's showing me that it's not created. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, we'll probably get a compiler error if that's not working though. Anyways, so we get that the thread takes in a function, arguments. Okay, so a function and arguments. So we can just sort of leave that stuff and that should be good. Cool, so this should start the thread. Uh, technically, I should keep track of it. So I guess we'll have a static std thread uh, thread. I guess we could call this worker threads. And I guess we'll create an array of them because we're probably going to have multiple. I'll just make it a 16 just so that we sort of have a pool, but uh, we'll get all that done when we get it. So anyways, we'll just initialize one for now. So we'll say worker threads equal zero equals thread chunk worker. Uh, oh, and this should be just stood thread. Okay, there we go. Okay. So that should start a thread that does the work and everything. Let's see what happens. Okay. We, we just got to run it at some point, right? I'm very curious to see what's going to happen because I have no idea. <laughs> also, how's the music, guys? Because I haven't been listening to it, so I have no idea if it's any good or not. Okay, we're not crashing, but it keeps saying uploading to GPU. Uh, and our memory is going up constantly. So something's definitely going wrong, and I'm not seeing it here either. So I must have forgotten to set some sort of flag. Okay. <laughs> so at least it did something, though, and we saw one chunk up there. It's just not working properly. Uh, let's see. And the music is quite chill. You like it? Cool. That's good. I picked, I think, chill music vibes or something like that. Yeah, it's just royalty free chill music for Twitch. So <laughs> that's good. Okay, anyways, though, uh, and let me just switch back to here. So I've got this up. Okay, so something's going completely wrong because it's not actually uploading it to the GPU, which is weird. Um, oh, you know, it's because I probably didn't mark it as loaded or whatever. Is that why? So when we synchronize the chunks, we say upload to GPU. Yeah, and then we need to mark it as uploaded here. So this says loaded equals true. Uh, working should be false at this point, and then we should say should load equals false. Should unload equals false. Okay, cool. I think that's probably what we were missing. So let's try this one more time and see what happens. Okay, so it definitely stopped this time. I'm only seeing one chunk though, which tells me something's going on. I also need to join that thread when I cancel the game, so I'll have to fix that too. Uh, okay, so we've got this chunk.load. Um, I think it's up here. What's this saying? So it says if the chunk's loaded and it's not working, 
then we render it and then we do all this stuff. So it should be rendering if it's not working, which I'm assuming happens when we do the upload, right? Because, yeah. So this says if it's not working and it should load, then we upload it to the GPU, which should say it is loaded now and it should not load. So that means that this should be loaded and not working, right? Yep, loaded and not working because the thread must have not been working on it. So now we got to do the debugging and stuff. <laughs> okay, so we've got this going through. If the chunk should load and the chunk is working, then we check if it exists. We deserialize it. We generate it. We generate the render data, and then we say the chunk is now not working. So that's fine. Otherwise, if the chunk should unload and the chunk is working, we free it on the CPU side and we say it's not working anymore. Let's put in a log here too, just so that we can sort of see the order of events. Um, so this will say G logger info chunk loading CPU, or we should say loading on CPU chunk percent D percent D. And then we'll say chunk dot chunk coordinates dot X chunk dot chunk coordinates dot Y. I think I already know what the problem might be, but I'm going to keep going with this just so that we can make sure. And let's say uh, chunk unloading on CPU, or I guess we'll just say unloading on CPU chunk percent D percent D. And this will be chunk dot coordinates X chunk dot coordinates Y. Okay. So we've got all that. Let's sort of see how this stuff happens in order. So I'll run this one more time. Okay, so we're going to get a bunch of logs here. We got a bunch of logs. I'm just going to do that. And then we got a bunch of just loading on CPU. That's kind of weird. Okay. But anyways, so what do we see here? It basically goes loading chunk, loading chunk. So this is all loading chunk. Is this happening on CPU or GPU? I think that's happening on GPU. Okay, no, then it says loading on CPU chunk zero zero, uploading to GPU chunk zero zero. Okay, so it never actually unloads the other stuff on the CPU. Okay, where is this coming from? This is coming from world.cpp line 168, which is right here. So this is just marking it to be loaded. So it's not actually loading it. So I'm going to move that out of there. This should really be right here. Okay, so this is the uploading to GPU. And then we also have loading on CPU. Okay, cool. So this is what we should have. Let's run this one more time and see what happens. So I can sort of get an idea of what's going on. Okay, so it looks like we're just loading one chunk. That makes sense. Yeah, so we're loading we're loading on the CPU chunk zero zero, then we're uploading it to zero zero. What's happening? I think I have an idea. <laughs> so I think what's happening is right here when we say we should load a new chunk. Okay, so this or I guess that's in the ch check chunk radius, right? Right here. Yes. So this says find unloaded chunk, but I was stupid and I never set the position of the chunk. I think this is all I'm missing. Coordinates dot X equals X. Coordinates dot Y equals Y. So I think what was happening, or I guess that should be easy, is it thought that all of the chunks were at zero, zero, and it just loaded them into zero, zero. So now if I do this, or I guess it technically just did it once, which is also good because no, that did not fix it. Okay. And it actually put it way over there now. Well, that's actually good because that tells me that's loading the like back right corner or something. But yeah, that's not good. So it said loading on CPU 44, then uploading to the GPU 44. Okay, so what else am I missing here? I'm probably missing something else. So this find unloaded chunk basically just goes through all of the chunks. And if it's not loaded and it's not working, then we should be good to return it. Uh, maybe this was a problem too. So let's try this again. Oh, okay. It's doing more stuff this time. And we got a whole 
Chunk. Radius thing. Okay, cool. So that's all good. Let's see what happens when I move. Oh, look at that, guys. Look at that. Uh, except we're having some crazy stuff going on in the logs that I'll have to fix. And that's definitely not good. <laughs> but hey, it's almost working. And it's way faster than it was before. They just sort of load in. Okay, yeah, and then I killed something. So <laughs> what's going wrong here? Uh, but hey, that's good, right? Yeah, hype. Thank you. <laughs> so we're doing something good, but it says we ran out of room. Okay, so we got to fix that and see why it's saying we're trying to free invalid memory. Okay, so I think what's happening is we are probably... Okay, I should probably run that one more time because now I just lost all my log information, which isn't good. Okay. Yeah, and it's kind of cool seeing them all load in. So let's do this till we get to that weird... Yeah, okay, so now we get crazy stuff going on. Let's see what's happening here. So if we scroll all the way up here, all the way up, come on. Let's just grab that. Okay, cool. So we load all the chunks. Uh, all works good. And then it's loading and it's unloading now, right? So it's loading, then it's uploading, loading, uploading. Okay, now that now we see some unloading chunks. Okay, so it's unloading on the CPU, unloading on the CPU. Um, loading on the CPU, and that's weird. I think this is probably like a thread issue that we got that weird stuff because the logger is not thread safe, which I probably should have uh, made it thread safe. I'll do that in the future. But yeah, anyway, so we load. Uh, and then when we try to unload this one, it says we tried to unload. Did we unload this already? So this is unloading negative four, negative four. And we have unloading negative four, negative four here. Do we unload it on the GPU? So that's unloading on the CPU. Which means that's happening in the thread. Okay, and then it's unloading on the CPU again. So it's doing it twice. So that's not good. So what's happening there? Let's go to world.cpp. So this is basically doing the unload twice. So when we free it on the CPU side, uh, we do want it to keep saying should unload is true, but then we say chunk.working is false, which is good. Oh, that was a different chunk? Negative four, four, negative four, negative four. Okay, thank you, Langors. Okay, so this probably isn't the problem then. But what I think is happening is like, when we free it, okay, when we look for a free chunk, what do we do? We say, we go through all the chunks, whoops. And if the chunk is not loaded and the chunk is not working, then we return the chunk, okay? So that's all good. And then when we upload it to the GPU, we say it's loaded, that's good. When we free it from the GPU, we should say, uh, I think that's up here. Okay, so when we free it from the GPU, we say it's not loaded, we say that it's should not load, should unload. And by definition, if it's freeing it on the GPU side, then if we look inside the world.cpp, then that means that it shouldn't be working. So I don't see how that could be a problem, right? Because if we look here, which is right down here. Okay, yeah. So if it's not working, then we free it on the GPU side. Yeah. So there's no way it could be working. So that's fine. Huh. Oh, wait, it said it unloaded negative four, negative four also twice. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I think what's happening with that is like basically it's trying to unload the same one twice, clearly. <laughs> Why, though, I, I'm not completely sure. Because, let's see, if we look in here, it says if it should unload and it's working. But then we set working to false, so this should not run twice. Let's run this one more time. I need to look at those logs again. Oh, and I need to uh, do that. There we go. Okay, so if we just start moving this way. Yeah, and I think it unloaded successfully a few times because I'm pretty sure I was unloading some chunks back there. Okay, let's see. So this is all uploading and loading. 
Yep, still uploading and loading. Okay, there we go. And then we get to unloading on negative four and negative four on the CPU. Then this is negative four, four. Okay, yep. Oh, and our logs are getting messed up too because of synchronization issues. I didn't even think about that, but that is not good as well. Because now we're not, we can't really trust these logs too much, I guess. But yeah, so then we get loading and then uploading and then we get loading, uploading, loading, uploading. Let's see. And then we get unloading GPU 7.3. Okay, so that's negative four, negative four, definitely. And this is also negative four, negative four, and it's both on the CPU. So it's definitely trying to free, and then this is when we get the first, we tried to free invalid memory. Um, so it's definitely trying to free the same memory twice, and that's why it's doing this. But why it's doing that, I'm not sure. Do we ever get an unloading on GPU? No, it doesn't look like it ever unloads on the GPU side, does it? So, CPU, CPU. And I don't see any GPU. Yeah, and then that's just CPU again. And then CPU again. And then CPU again. Oh, did, am I calling the wrong function? Maybe that's all it is. So this free CPU. And where we synchronize, this freeze GPU. Okay, so that looks right. And it says GPU. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Langors, aren't you using multiple booleans in the condition? Won't that cause problems because one of the booleans may have already been written to and the other not? Yeah, I think you're right. I think I need to have some atomic stuff. I'm going to do what you said now because <laughs> you definitely know more about this than I do uh, in terms of the threading. So uh, let's make an atomic integer, which is sort of all the flags or I'll, I'll make all the booleans atomic for now. And then we'll see what happens with that and see if this fixes it. So I should be able to just make them atomic, right? And that should sort of work. So if I say this is a stood atomic bool, um, and I'll switch it to just one number in the future too. And then stood atomic bool, this one also, oops. And this one also. Okay, cool. So these are now all atomic. So if we go back into here, hopefully it should give us some errors or does C++ do all that stuff automatically where it just sort of makes it work. I don't think it does, but um, let's see, should unload dot load and all of this stuff is always lock free is lock free load. Okay, we'll have to figure that out. Uh, Langors, I think making all the booleans atomic will still cause problems, but nothing like trying to see if it works yet. <laughs> and is this music from a Twitch library? I have no idea. Uh, like I said, it's just coming from this YouTube playlist. So I think this guy might make it. I'm not sure. But if it's on YouTube, I'm assuming it's not copyrighted. So <laughs> we should be good there, hopefully, when I upload these. Okay. So yeah, I just made those all atomic. Let's see what happens when I run this. I don't know if just making them atomic works or not. I don't think it does, but we'll see. Okay, that's kind of satisfying. <laughs> yeah, so we're still getting the same problem and that's going crazy. <laughs> okay. So Langors, you got any ideas on this too? Because that might be helpful. I see what's oh I was not here when you said that about the music earlier. You're good. Don't worry. But yeah, the music I hope is good. Um it sounded pretty good when I was listening to it. But uh I feel like we just need to lock the bools is what I feel like because if we lock it while we're operating on it on the thread, then nothing else should be able to read or write from it or whatever. But yeah, I also thought since we're not actually writing anything to it in the main thread. That should be fine, right? But technically we are writing. 
Well, we shouldn't be writing to it in the main thread when it's working on it in the uh, thread. Look into the docs. There are two functions that compare and exchange in a single statement. <laughs> I gotta play some power metal. <laughs> exchange and compare and exchange. Okay, I'll check that out real quick. Stood atomic. And you always coded that. Wow. I don't know if I could. I usually code to like Frank Sinatra or Dean Martin or something. <laughs> so I like listening to old school music or I'll do like 60s, 70s rock and stuff, which is also pretty nice. But um, I have some friends who are pretty good fans of like heavy metal and stuff, though. <laughs> okay. Unless power metal is a band, which I might have just completely misinterpreted that. So exchange says automatically replaces the underlying value with the desired. The operation is read, modify, write operation. Memory is affected according to the value of the order. Okay, so this basically just changes out the value. And then stood atomic, you said compare and exchange. Which atomically compares this value representation of this with that expected and if those are bitwise equal uh replaces it the memory model okay so it basically just does both and an example this is good so they've got this here so this is an atomic node t and then we say this is a new node and then we say all this stuff well, not compare and exchange. Okay, so now make the new node the new head, but if the head is no longer what's stored in the node context, some other thread must have inserted a node just now, then put that new head into new node next and try again. Okay. Note, the above use is not thread safe in, in at least GCC prior. Okay. Hmm. And as he would, he said, power metal is a uh, genre. Okay, it's all about feeling you get after slaying a dragon. Nice. It's not heavy or you have heavy power metals. All. Okay, cool. Uh, I have a friend who probably listened to stuff similar to that when he would work out and stuff too then. But yeah, so this is basically compare and exchange and exchange. So Langor is too and everyone else if you're following me with this. The reason I think it shouldn't matter though is because we basically set chunk.working true right here as soon as we are yeah right here as soon as we say like we need to unload it we say this is now true which basically this says should unload is true working is true and then when we load it we say working is true and should load is true so we do that on the main thread and then this thread which is working on all the chunks only does it if it sees that should be working. So this is only reading the working thread. Oh, but then we write to the working thread too, or the working Boolean too. So this is the only one that needs to be atomic though. Um, Cause these are just reads. So we're not actually writing to it. That all happens on the main thread. This is the only one that we're reading and writing to. So let's modify this a little bit. Cause I think if I understand this correctly, I think that's the only one. And you say you think you'll still have problems because you're working with multiple booleans and while they're atomic, they aren't atomic between each other. Yes. Yeah. And wait, I think you're right. I think one of these functions might actually change them too. So this generate render data does... No, I don't think this changes it. Yeah, so that doesn't change anything. Um, and then free CPU doesn't change any of the booleans either. Yeah, so the only boolean we're actually changing is the working thread on two threads. That's the only one. So I think I have to worry about that. And all of these should be fine because we're only reading. That's my understanding of multi-threading at least. Uh, it's confusing. <laughs> so uh, this one should be fine not being atomic is what I understand. Same with this one and this one, but this one definitely needs to be. And this is the one where I'm gonna try and use that compare and exchange uh, value thing <laughs> and see if that helps. So we'll say chunk.working.compare and exchange strong or weak. We'll do a strong, I guess, we'll see what happens. So expected is true, desired is false. 
And what's this say? No instance of matches the argument list. Types are bool, bool. Okay. Uh, let me look at this one more time. Trunk dot working dot compare and exchange. Takes in a bool. Yeah. True. False. Oh, I'm supposed to pass in the actual value, aren't I? So this should be trunk dot working dot value or load. I believe, maybe. Or maybe just like the address of this. No, okay. I have to look into multi-threading a little bit more real quickly. So let's do this real quickly. We'll say how to lock a bool uh, C++. Okay, is it okay to read a shared Boolean flag without locking it when another thread may set it at most once? I would like my thread to shut down. Okay, so this is kind of good. This is similar. Yeah, this is very similar to what we're doing. Okay, cool. I understand at least in Windows, locks are the least expensive thread in synchronization primitive, but am I keen to avoid overuse? Okay, it is never okay to read something possibly modified in a different thread without synchronization. What level of synchronization is needed depends on what you're actually reading. For primitive types, you should have a look at atomic reads in the form of atomic bool. Okay, so it looks like we do still need to wrap those in atomic even though uh, I'm just reading. The reason synchronization is always needed is that the processors will have the data possibly shared in a cache line, okay? There's no reason to update this value to possibly to a value possibly changed in a different thread if there's no synchronization. Worse yet, if there is no synchronization, it may write the wrong value. Something stored is close, okay. And then this says, stood atomic as part of C++ 2011 is typically implemented on top of the platforms. Um, gives a nice and portable interface. Boolean assignment is atomic. That's not the problem. The problem is that the thread may not see. Okay. So it looks like they do all have to be atomic and I have to sort of use atomic properly to get this to work right. So let's wrap these back. Whoops like that and then we'll say how to use C++ atomic to read and write values Yeah, because as good as the C++ docs are they just don't help me that much you know so anyways okay this guy says why does this program sometimes print two? so a equals a dot load plus one okay so he's basically just adding I've thought stood atomic guarantees that all operations will be done atomically. So writing here, okay, all that stuff. T3, unlike the two threads, does not perform an atomic add. Instead, it automatically loads A, performs the arithmetic add one on a temporary, and automatically stores that value back into A. This overwrites A regardless. So you can have the following scenario. Two, T1 or T2 autom atomically increment A. T3 autom atomically loads one. So, okay, this loads it then it adds it, and then it stores it. So do we need to lock it when we, okay, yeah. So I think I'm kind of understanding this. So inside of here, when we do this, we should say loaded.lock. Can we lock it? How do we lock it? <laughs> okay, how to lock atomic variable C++. So I think this is what I need to do. Atomic operations leverage processor support, compare and swap instructions. Um, okay, I have to look up the difference between atomic and locks, C++. Okay, what is the difference? Yeah, this is gonna help me out. <laughs> Mutex is a data structure that enforces a mutual exclusivity in a program. If you want only one thread to execute some part of your program, you can enforce it through mutex. Let's say, for example, you want to keep incrementing a variable in a critical section. You can use a mutex as below. Um, so we lock it, then we increment it, then we unlock it. If you take a close look at the above, you notice that you had to create another variable, mutex, which has nothing at all to do with it. This is the main difference between atomic operations. You don't need to create another variable to achieve the mutual exclusivity. Take an example of an atomic operation, a uh, compare and swap. Okay, this is, I don't think I've ever really used atomic operations and stuff. So this is probably where my confusion is. You can get more information about from the wiki. I'll take a look at that in a second. 
It atomically sets the variable with a given value. If it succeeds, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. So we say do something while compare and set counter counter plus one. The biggest difference is that you can directly use your program variables in this example counter to achieve the mutual exclusivity with atomic operations. You can't do it with mutex. This can be advantageous for cache sensitive programs where you don't have to mess up your cache due to mutual exclusivity. I really doubt now people care that much about cache though. <laughs> okay, let's look at this real quickly. I'm just gonna use a mutex then because I think a mutex is a little bit simpler. So let's do that for now. And then if it causes performance issues for whatever reason, then we'll not use mutex. So we'll just change these all to mutex. Okay, what is it? Stood mutex. No, where is a mutex? Okay, so we need to include probably mutex. Nope, they show the include file. Yeah, mutex, cool. So let's go into core and we'll add in hash include mutex and we'll use this. And if we go back into world.cpp, we can, or actually chunk.h. Okay, so this, we should be able to use mutex, cool. What's the saying? Mutex may not have a template argument list. Oh, because the mutex is basically just a lock, yeah. Okay, so that makes sense. So this is sort of what we use to lock things, right? So we would have, we could keep these all as atomic pools. And we basically have a std mutex uh, lock. And so we just sort of lock this and unlock this as we're changing things, right? And SE Woods, have I looked into Unreal Engine? Looks awesome for what I've seen. Cherno has gone through, but probably has a sea of functions to navigate through to learn it. Yeah, I've taken a look at Unreal Engine source code a little bit. Um, it's pretty easy to get access to it. And I think I was looking at it when I was doing some UI, or no, when I was doing DLL hot loading, because I wanted to see how they did it. And it's kind of hard to find what you're looking for, but uh, you can find it fairly easily. And their code is pretty nice. So it's it's cool. Okay, so now we've got this mutex, which is sort of like our lock. And I believe we can use this to sort of say we're doing stuff. So what, if we say lock dot lock. Okay, yeah, so we can say that and then lock dot unlock. And then what, we can say, how do we use the mutex again? <laughs> Does he say this? Okay, so we say lock the mutex counter and then unlock the count mutex. How do we check if it's locked or not though? Is what I'm wondering. Cause do we need to do that or I don't know. Okay, I'll just sort of go with this and see what happens. So we lock it and then we unlock it when we're changing stuff. And same thing inside of here. This should be setting it to false. And I'll say lock dot lock. What I say in here? It's a little bit different. No, it's just lock. Yep. So, oh, I need to say chunk. And then chunk dot lock dot unlock. And I'll do the same thing here. I'm probably doing this horribly wrong. I might need to take a look at this stuff off stream and like follow a proper tutorial and stuff just so that I know how this actually works and then I'll have to come back to it. You don't need to check anything. If it's locked, it will wait. Okay, thank you, Languors. That was what I was wondering, yeah. So this will basically just check and then wait for us if it needs to. And take a look at this. Ooh, thank you, Eddie Dev. This is helpful. Is it gonna take me there? There we go, okay, cool. Lock guard. So the class lock guard is a mutex wrapper that provides RAA style. Okay. So basically you just say lock guard, lock mutex, and then it goes out of scope and it cleans it up. Okay. So it's basically the same thing. Uh, just does it automatically for me. <laughs> Langors does have the knowledge. <laughs> same with you, Eddie Dev. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Lock guard is a bit safer though. Okay. So I'll switch to lock guard and we'll use that. So See, this is when it's great to have stream and you guys, because 
most of the time you guys will know a lot of stuff that I mean all of the time you guys know stuff that I don't know so it's very helpful to have uh, other people who can sort of guide me <laughs> okay so we've got a lock guard here and this takes in template oh wait so lock guard is a bit safer oh I've got somebody raiding I don't know what a raid is so yeah have no idea what's going on guys <laughs> yeah I'll just nod along too thanks for the raid I'm not sure what that is though okay so let's go look at this lock guard again uh so this takes in a mutex okay so we sort of need both or no we can just say it's a mutex and then we just do this thing oh and then we provide it the mutex okay 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 so I see so I still have a mutex here which is the lock and then inside of here I say something like this and then this will automatically go out of scope and fix everything so then we just pass it the chunk dot lock okay cool so then we don't have to worry about unlocking anything because it will do it for us automatically and we do the same thing here I believe okay and look at my viewer count oh I've got 13 viewers hey <laughs> sweet and a raid is where all of your friends become your friends I'm another streamer I'm off to bed and just ended my stream and sent you all my viewers whoa thanks Rockstar that's pretty cool so when a streamer sends all viewers to another streamer usually at the end of their stream oh I've got over 60 viewers dang wow thanks guys yeah I did not even notice that I'm looking at my OBS chat which just shows 13 viewers for now but yeah thanks Rockstar that's really cool I'll have to check out your streams now and see what you're doing yeah yeah I am starting to get a little bit nervous because now my coding is out there for the world to see <laughs> okay so if we do the same thing here we've got a lock guard and we should be able to just get rid of that too um, I believe this should hopefully fix things for us and it all just sort of works <laughs> it's okay you're all 12. all right thanks man uh, OBS is a bit late that is true it's still saying 13 viewers so when I'm looking at that I typically don't have any idea what it says okay so if I go up to here where we've got these locks again um, somewhere up here because I think I modify these variables in one other place oh it's inside of the trunk isn't it yeah so I just need to do the same thing here so I will lock it and then it should unlock it there and I'll lock it here as well and yes I am building a Minecraft clone and hopefully it will be working after this one I have no idea though okay so then right here I'll also need to do a lock and here okay let's run this and see what happens no idea what's gonna happen but you know all right so it's compiling all right so that's a good sign and it's running okay and then we get this problem this is I was expecting something to break so what's it saying so this was no pointer oh so it looks like I just need to initialize the lock which makes sense <laughs> okay so let's go ahead and when we initialize a chunk which I guess we can just sort of do in the beginning here uh, where we're going through all this stuff yeah so we're gonna set it all to zero and then what I'll do is I'll just say for uh, int I equals zero until I is less than chunk capacity I plus plus and then I'll just say uh, we need to set up all the locks so I'll just say chunks I dot lock equals stood lock and I think that should be good right we just do this okay what's the saying yeah so whoops if I go back over to here oh we just need to initialize the mutex okay not a lock there we go so we can do that and what's this say so mutex it declared at nine cannot be referenced as a deleted function okay so that's kind of weird and Minecraft clones are pretty neat but I've got to get it working too so <laughs> and for a second you thought it was coded in Java 
but then it's released in C++. So the original Minecraft is coded in Java, but I'm coding in C++ and I think Bedrock Edition is in C++ too. Oh, cool. Thanks, uh, CV Imputer. So computer, thank you for following. Yeah, so uh, we've got this mutex. It doesn't let us assign this here though, because we can't. So it's kind of weird because I'm just like, maybe we shouldn't zero the memory here. Instead of doing that, I'm just gonna say dot lock or dot loaded equals false. So we'll just sort of initialize everything here. Dot should load equals false. Dot should unload equals false. And chunks i dot working equals false. Okay, let's see if this fixes that problem. And Langors, I think the mutex gets auto initialized. I think the problem is I'm using the same name. Oh, okay, for the mutex and the lock guard. Oh, that would probably make sense. Okay, so I called this a lock for the mutex. Yep, oh, and then you're saying I'm using the same name in here. That makes a lot of sense, yeah, okay. <laughs> Minecraft clone, the holy grail of the dev story arc, yes. Uh, it would make sense to just call this a, I don't know, Boolean flags lock. Okay, so let's fix all of those areas then. I also did that inside of world.cpp too. And I did that somewhere else in here, didn't I? Yep. I can't believe I didn't even notice that I was doing that. <laughs> okay, and then if I scroll back down to here, which is somewhere over here yeah so this is where we lock it again so i'll just do that and that and this is gonna be chunk dot lock and same thing here okay let's see what happens this time and what's my background curious on different streamers and their developer journey so i am a programmer at a financial institution sort of thing um i've been programming for like five or six years now I graduated college like last year, yeah, a little bit over a year ago and got a programming degree in computer science. So just kind of typical programming major stuff. Um, but I've always been interested in game development. Like that's what got me into programming, specifically Minecraft. So I first started programming when I learned about Minecraft's like command blocks and everything. Um, and then I found some YouTube tutorials on how to make like circuits in Minecraft, which was awesome. So I learned about all sorts of logic gates and had no idea what I was doing. Uh, and then it just sort of grew from there. So pretty cool stuff. And thanks, uh, Guidoka too. <laughs> I'm gonna say your guys' names wrong so so bad, but yeah. And check out this YouTube channel, it's awesome. Oh, thanks, Essie Woods. <laughs> yeah, so I've had a YouTube channel for a little bit while, for like two years now, which is the reason that I had a pretty good following coming to Twitch, so yeah. Okay, um, I'm still breaking this though, and it's saying read access violation. Okay, because now it's just null. So something is just null. Let's go back to this thing, and then I'm gonna zero out the memory again, and maybe that will fix it. So we'll just do chunks, and then size of chunk times chunk capacity. Okay, let's see what happens now. Right now I'm experimenting with multi-threading though and it's not going the best because I am not that familiar with multi-threading stuff. Yeah, so I think I'm probably gonna have to end this stream pretty soon just because I'm gonna have to follow some real tutorials and everything off stream and sort of figure out how this stuff works. But for those of you guys who just joined, uh, I'll go ahead, get rid of the locks and stuff so that you can sort of see where we're at. So let me get rid of that and we'll get rid of the locks. So I'll just comment that stuff out and that stuff out. And right here and here. Okay. And let's learn together. I normally I would, but I usually end my streams around this time and everything. So let's also change this. Oh, and this could have also been where it was breaking too. So I'll just change this 
to this. But yeah, and I do have to get like my car's emissions tested and everything because of all that garbage, you know? So I have to do that before they close today and everything. But yeah, this is where it's at right now. So basically we've got this. And when's my next stream? I usually stream on Saturdays at 9 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. But I'm also going to start streaming probably like Wednesdays or Thursdays at about 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I'll try and put a calendar up on my channel or on the Twitch channel and everything just so that you guys can see that. And I'll try and hold true to it, but uh, it depends. But yeah. So this is basically what we've got so far, though. And you can see that the multi-threading has made the chunk loading better. But then once we get to unloading chunks, it starts going crazy because I have locking issues and then it just crashes. So that's basically what we're trying to solve is like figure out how to get the multi-threading synchronized all right and everything. But yeah, I think I'm going to leave this stream here for now, though, because I do have to get some other stuff done today. Um, if you guys want, I'll be streaming next week uh, at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And I'll also be streaming probably Wednesdays or Thursdays, depending on when I have free time and everything. So yeah. Thank you all so much for coming, though, and I'll see you next time. And take a look at Atomic Byte. It will be the most efficient solution. I'll do that when I start checking stuff out. Thanks, guys. All right. See you, everyone.